Now I'm going to put a link to this video down below when we found out all the problems on this roof. But this year we've been back to do some other upgrading work. We've changed the parapet stones. We've put in these vents down the side. And this video I'm going to show you how we did this embutment vent which goes around the outside. Links to the other videos will all be down below. So let's have a look at what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do is put a, a vent all the way along this wall and down this wall. And as you can see at the moment, this just this roof just typically stops up against the, uh, the wall here. Now why do we want to vent this? Well we need to make sure that we can get air to go in through this vent and run between all of the timbers that run backward and forward this way on that part of the roof and across this way on this part of the roof down to the mushroom vents that we're going to put all the way around the outside. So what we've got come up with is this. I built these in the workshop. I normally build them on site but you can see there's a few over here as well. But the reason that I've built them beforehand is because I already knew the measurements. I've been here but typically I would just go along with these black plastic vents. Uh, but I knew the measurements here so I made them up in the workshop and I'll flip to the workshop now and show you how I made those. Then I'll come back and show you how we cut all this off and we fitted it to the wall. So the timbers that you can see here and a stack at the back here I've had pre-cut to the correct size. The height um, is already known because I know where at the back on this right hand side just along here where I want to butt up against the wall. Now I talked to the customer about the way that this goes onto the wall um, and theoretically we should have butted to the wall and then gone up the wall 150 mil and then turned it into the uh, the brickwork. However, that would have made the whole thing look bulky. So it was decided that we would just come straight across and go straight into the wall. So why would you put 150 mil up a turn on this when it goes into the wall? And the reason being is because any water bouncing on this would would bounce back up and, and wet the wall. But it was sort of decided that you know there's not going to be an awful lot of rain that is going to do that. So um, the customer didn't want to do it, didn't want to see it so bulky. So the way this works now is air will be able to come up here behind, around through the vent and down here. So on site I'm going to need to cut, uh, and again okay, this bit here butts up against the wall, so on site the roof that runs across underneath at this particular point I'm going to have to cut away so that we can have air that can move again around here down into that area and then across underneath to vent the rest of the roof. So cutting away the old part of the roof isn't that easy and takes actually quite some time. The old roof was a Kemper roof. Um, although I have sort of all sorts of issues with Kemper roofs, it's not a bad system uh, apart from the smell. Um, and uh, it's really, really quite tough. So getting all of this out was not that easy. But you can see here, this is, this is really nice and clear now. Let's just talk you through some details though. First of all, the reason that you've got a piece of timber just there and here and along this wall over here is because of the back of the skylight. Now you can see a joist there and there and here and here. Theoretically we can now vent air in here and all the way down that channel, air in here and all the way down that channel and so on all the way around. But we can't vent from here down and up the back of this part because um, we just can't get a vent across the back. Um, we've have, we have vents at the other end and I'll show you on another video which again the link is below uh, on that vent which are the mushroom vents that we've put at the other end. However luckily for this particular customer there's cross battening as well so air that flows into here can come across here and move all the way around so that isn't a dead space and that isn't a dead space which is which is really quite good. Now when we start looking down here we can see that the insulation hasn't been butted up correctly. Um, this will lead to um, thermal bridging and air movement if air can get through it from down below. There's no sign of a vapour barrier coming up the wall and, and sealing the wall. So again, air movement from down below, which brings up moisture, can come up all around behind there. So before we continue by uh, and put the vents down, we're going to go along and we're going to seal all of these joints using uh, f uh, expanding foam. But you can see that this isn't, I mean, attention to detail with all of this stuff is what it's all about.
I need to take you over to this drawing that I did on uh, SketchUp of a basic principle of what the roof we've got just so that you can understand because this roof isn't particularly um, a typical example of a warm roof. In fact the only way of explaining the way they have built the roof is to say that this is a warm roof with a cold roof on top of it and let me explain why. First of all I'm going to get rid of the walls which are around the outside of this you can see here that we've got furrings that are running from the back wall where we're going to put our vent right the way across down to the front. 8 by 2 joists, 100 mil of insulation on top and now this is the really weird thing about this roof. What they've decided to do is put a 4 by 2 across spaced every 4 or 500 uh, and they've laid it on its side with insulation in between so there is actually 100 plus uh, the 50 mil which is 150 mil of insulation to this roof but here's the problem. Although that forms a warm roof with a hundred mil and then in between all the cross sections 50 mil, they've put the um, furrings running downwards and there's an open void on the top. If I just put the decking down for you and just show you around here you can clearly see that there's a lovely gap for air to move backward and forward but actually what's happening on this roof is that the any migration of air which is underneath here of course there'll be a ceiling here any migration of air that gets up through because they didn't put a vapor barrier in is sitting in these voids which is on the back of the decking the decking is cold theoretically a uh, warm roof there would be no gap on the top but because there is a gap on the top you've now got a warm roof with a cold roof on the top and you should vent that space up there again if I put the brickwork back you'll see at the edges here there's a gap running down and typically what's happening is is that because there is no vapor barrier running underneath this area we would normally bring the vapor barrier across here and up the wall sealing it to the wall so no moisture can get up no airflow can get up with moisture up there through there and into that particular area without the vapor barrier and without the vapor barrier sealed to the wall there you've got migration of this going up getting into these voids and it's sweating and we found uh, on this particular roof actually that most of the rotted areas are along here along here and along here suggesting that the 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 problem is the migration of the moisture from down below going up so we're back to the vent and you can see the new sections have gone in just there. The new GRP edging has gone in over the top of this part here. And note the really nice groove there ready for the finish that we're going to put on. We're going to be using our um, uh, liquid, reinforced liquid system that will go over the top. Now before we do that we've got a nice flexible joint going in here and we're doing all the bottom piece first because once the GRP capping is over the top we can't get to the bottom and just look how far into the wall we're able to get it um, here because we've got good access because we've cut a nice groove and hence why I knew where the joint was in the workshop beforehand. So there you are, that's the whole thing finished um, and you've got a nice low profile vent which is, I mean that you can't get more venting than that. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased how that came, came, up, came along. Now if you're interested I'll show you how we did the mushroom vents and also what we did with the parapet walls. Uh, I'll put the links down below. Thanks for watching.